Hello, hello everyone. It's been a hot minute, so I wanted to make some content today. Um, this video, I'm just going to briefly talk about the meta nodes components and web apps and some considerations for using components in your local desktop application versus if you want to use it in a web app. So let's start with meta nodes. What's a meta node? A meta node is a series of nodes which help you organize and also reuse nodes. So for instance, here, what I've built is an API um, connection to this website called Board, BoardAPI.com. Basically, it recommends you something to do if you're bored. It's, it's pretty cool, just a nice fun thing to mess around with. So in here, I have a series of nodes which lets us connect to the API and get some results. Here, I have a counting loop start node, which includes 10 items. So I have that node, I get my results, I get specifically what parts of the result I want from the JSON path. So I select the activity, participants, price, accessibility, and I do some filtering. I sort the columns to show which one is the cheapest, the most accessible, and I remove the duplicates because sometimes that happens. And all of this is contained within my meta node. So if I wanted to do this again in a different workflow, I could just copy and paste it here. And I could use that as many times as I want in as many places as I want. Now, one thing to note is, let's say I wanted data to come out of here to use in other parts of my workflow. I could just go to meta node, go to reconfigure and add a table port. I think in the nine before version 4.6, it was called data. So either data or table depends on which version you're using. Then I need to go back here and make sure I connect the last results to the, uh, to the output port and I can have the data here to use for the rest of my workflow if I wanted to do that. So that's a meta node, keeps you organized. You can reuse things uh, in places that you want to. A component is very similar and note that within a component, you can have lots of meta nodes, but the, the main difference is a component is configurable. And also with a component, you can control which flow variables come into the component and which ones come out. So I have left these items here but i'll make them a component just to illustrate for you so basically i've put in some configuration nodes which lets the user specify which activity type they want to do the number of activities to return and also the participants i have placed some restriction around these two but i'm going to paste this on the nime hub so you can take it and change it or do whatever you want if you actually want to use this to help you yourself figure out what to do with your with your time um but yeah you can change the configurations in here just a trick with the merge variables. It took me a couple of months of using uh, using things like this to figure out that the merge variables, you can actually add uh, input ports. So before I thought you can only have two, so I'll put two and then I'll get another merge variable and then put those two merge variables together. But you can add the ports to accommodate as many as you want. I don't know if there's a restriction. I assume there might be, but I don't quite know what the restriction is, but just a small tip for you here. And then I am reusing this my meta node entertainment here, but everything outside is what lets me configure. But I did make a change to to create my URL based on the activity type and the number of participants that the user has selected. So that gives me the dynamic aspect of, of this as well. I just added some quick notes. It's always best practice to put your notes. But besides that, everything else is more or less the same, only that now this count loop or the number of loops is being controlled by, and this should say loop X times, is being controlled by what the user says. So now to make this a component, I'm going to select everything I want included in that component. So I'm going to select all these nodes and I'm going to right click, click on component, create component. It's going to reset. Is that fine? Yes, that's fine. Click on OK. OK, so that's a component now. And similarly, you can also right click, you can click on set up. So with the meta node is reconfigure both component it's set up. You can here add that you want an output port and you can also change the title if you wanted to. Uh, with the meta node, I did it off screen. So let me just create it on screen. So I'm just going to expand it to take everything out of the meta node and I'm going to reselect it. It's already selected. So I'm just going to right click and create a meta node. I'm going to call it enter. Okay. Click on okay. And it's a meta node. 
And again, if I wanted to add those ports, I go to matter node, reconfigure, and I can add that table output port, but I have to go back in to make that connection. And here as well, I need to make the connection by clicking on open and connecting it. Now, if you click on expand, it's basically going to bring out everything that's inside and put it out in your, in your workflow. So it's going to take those nodes out of the component and bring them out here. Okay. So uh, with this API, sometimes you don't get back results based on your selections and there's some error controls that can be done to make this better for the user and that's something maybe i hopefully i'll get into in, a, in another video just be aware of that if you're using this so i'm just going to keep activity to any when you use any activity you oftentimes actually get results and let's say we want 10 activities that you can do with two people and click on ok and we can run that we only see four results, so that signifies that there's some duplicates in there which have been filtered out. But if we did one, for instance, I know there's a lot more activities for just one person. Then we actually get 10 distinct results. One more thing I want to show you with components, you can control the flow variables that enter and, and uh, leave the environment. So if I had flow variables, flow variables in my workflow before, I can select the ones I want in here, but I didn't have any. But here, since I have flow variables within my component, I can here specify that, let's say I want all of these flow variables to be available to the other parts of my workflow. I can include them, but if I didn't want them available, I can ex exclude all of them. That's one thing that you, you're able to control using components. And then finally, with components again, you can use different nodes called uh, <laughs> widget, 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 called widget if you want it to have a nicer look and feel. I often see this in web apps. So if you're making a web app, you really want to use the widget nodes, not the configuration nodes. And basically you see the, you see these nodes here. So if you go to the workflow abstraction, you will see two section configuration and widgets. The nodes in here are very, very similar, but the words that they have at the end are different. So for input, you have Boolean configuration. Over here, you have the Boolean widget. Credentials configuration, credentials widget. So if you're doing the web app, you want to use the widgets, okay? But with web apps, you still use components and you can still use meta nodes. You can use several components, several meta nodes, but for the interactivity, for the configuration of those, you want to use the widget. And I'll show you, for instance, if you double click on this, it says nothing is configurable. But if you go inside, notice that these nodes are blue they're doing the exact same thing as these nodes but you can see that these nodes are green because they're different types of nodes now with the widget nodes again double click it says nothing is configurable but if you right click you actually see interactive view so this is how it looks on the website. It's it's a bit prettier. It's it's a bit more modern. So here we can make our, our configurations. Let's say we want any activity or oh, let's do educational activity for one person. And we want, let's say we want, mm, let's do 20 activities. Can apply and close temporarily and it runs. And here we have 13 activities because there's probably some duplicates and the duplicates filter has gotten rid of those okay now one thing to note about the web app super important if you want different pages you have to have different components so let's say here i actually wanted the users to have another page where they can see the results in a nice table i can drag a table view node table view And let's say I call this here. Are some cool There's lots of uh, configurations you can do here, but I wouldn't really do any right now. You can use some custom CSS if you like to make things look even prettier. So you would specify that here from a flow variable that you had. So if you use the CSS editor, 
you can put in your CSS code here and then connect it to here and then select that as your flow variable. But anyway, so yes, a table would show us the results. So we can run this. Uh, let's just label this view results. Whoops. View results. Okay. And let's run this and open up the interactive view. And the users here can even sort, let's say they want the, it's already sorted, but let's say I wanted to see the most expensive items. I can reverse sort it to have those ones at the top. Why is, well, I guess you have to buy, a, you actually have to buy a calligraphy pen to learn. That's why it has a price. So uh, the interactive table lets them do some things. But in terms of screens on the web app, you need to, you need to make this itself a component. So create a component out of this. Are you sure? Yes. And call this view results. And then, and then if I go to view this on the web app, it's going to give me these two screens. And I'll show you that in a second. But I just want to point out one more thing. So in the configurations, you can actually go to, so let's say I wanted to edit how they view these things and I want them to see the number of activities first before the activity type. I could just click on this. And I'm just going to add a row at the top of the activity type. And I'm going to pull the number of activities over there and I'm going to delete this thing now so it's empty and then now when I go to view it again it's going to first ask me for how many activities I want then the activity type then the participant which I think is a better flow okay now I'm going to show you what this is going to look like on the server side I'm going to make a new workflow just going to copy these two notes and put them in here can't you see? It's going to keep going up. Okay, just leave them right there where they are. I'm going to save this. And I'm going to de deploy this to the server. And now if I play this web app entertain, I can see that I'm, I'm in my web browser. I have these configurations in a nice big format that looks user friendly for a web app. And I can specify I want 10 activities. I want activities of social types. And I want two participants. And I can go to next and it runs this and it gives me the results in a table. So the reason why we're having these two screens is because we have configured our web app to have two different components. So think of a component as a screen. And again, there's many different customizations you can do with CSS. And you want to make sure that for the web app, you are using those widget nodes. If you use just a component on your computer and you don't need anything fancy, you can straight up use the configuration nodes and you get something like this but of course you can still use those widget nodes to have that more uh, i guess i'll say nicer um, configuration dialog box which you get as well in the interactive view i hope this has helped someone because i kind of struggled with this and honestly what tripped me the most was getting to have different pages on the web app it took me a while to figure out that those things have to be in different components for you to get this uh this navigation that's pretty much all i wanted to discuss with you today maybe i'll do something on better error handling in the future i think that'll be a nice topic to discuss but i'll see you in the next one thank you goodbye